Just gotta check your prisoner, Officer Bowles. Whatever, just be quick! Only following procedure. Well, the patient seems to be in satisfactory condition. Looks like he suffered minor lacerations, probably in the last two hours. There seems to be... <laughs> Need to take my temperature? I'd be happy to drop my pants. Bro, what did you just say? I... I just... Nah, bro, that's still gay! No. You're gay! You're... He's gay! I'm not gay. Alright boys and girls, I hope you're all having a lovely day, okay? Today, boys, I wanted to talk about one of my favourite games of all time, okay? And that is Batman Arkham Asylum, okay? This is just such a wonderful game, okay? And I've played this game so many times, and I recently replayed it, I think, in October. And I just really wanted to talk about it today. I would have talked about it in October, but October was just crazy busy with, like, new games. I made, like, tons of videos last month on, like, newer shit, so I want to get back to the past a little bit here. It's not quite retro, but, you know, it's definitely a little bit more retro than what we've been talking about about lately. And yeah, Arkham Asylum has a real special place in my heart, lads, okay? Because Batman Arkham Asylum is actually responsible for my love of Batman, okay? If it wasn't for this game, I probably wouldn't even like Batman right now. When I was growing up, I would see Batman and stuff, and I, in my head, I just had it that it was just, like, really babyish and childish. I just had that that sort of view on all superhero stuff. I don't know. I don't know why I thought like that, so I never really gave Batman a chance as a kid. But I can remember the day that I very first saw Batman Arkham Asylum, okay? I saw it on, on a store shelf, and I think it was HMV I saw it. And I, I saw that 15 rating and I thought, oh, that's unusual for Batman. You know, again, I'm thinking Batman is for kids. Oh, I was very wrong, by the way. Batman is definitely not for kids. I'm going to make this pencil disappear. <laughs> Ta -da! Hey. That's fucked up. I had a look at that bad cover, okay, and I, and I saw that Welcome to the Madhouse with the Joker, and I thought, okay, this looks really good. I need to get hold of this game, but at the time, I didn't actually have a PS3. But when I did get my PS3, one of the first games I wanted to get was Batman Arkham Asylum, okay, and I remember putting that motherfucker on my Christmas list, okay, that was what I really wanted for Christmas, and I did actually get it, and I just absolutely adored the game. I played it, I finished it, and it was uh, just a masterpiece. I absolutely adored it. And all I wanted to do as soon as I finished it was play Arkham City, because Arkham City was actually out at the time that I got Arkham Asylum so I really wanted to get my hands on Arkham City but it was still quite expensive and I didn't have the money for it so what did I do? I popped that motherfucker back in there and I played Arkham Asylum again and I very rarely do that usually I'll play it, I'll put it on the shelf and maybe I'll come back to it you know five, six years down the line when I feel like playing it again but with Arkham Asylum I put it straight back in, I started playing it again and I've beaten this game probably like five, six maybe even seven times okay I've played this game a ton and again that's rare for me usually I might play a game at most twice maybe three times if it's really good but the, the very rare few that I played multiple times over and over and over again this falls into that category okay because I love it so much because of my love for this game as a teenager I just started consuming all sorts of Batman stuff okay I started watching The Dark Knight and to this day it's one of my favorite movies of all time I started reading all the comic books you know the killing joke I just thought okay this is this is an absolute bang of like comic book right here I just really started to consume basically everything Batman at, at this point in my life so for that reason let's I absolutely have to thank Arkham Asylum, okay, because if it wasn't for this game, again, I probably wouldn't like Batman that much. But anyway, lads, enough about nostalgia, okay, let's talk about whether or not this game is still good in 2023, okay, and uh, if you just want the short answer, yes, this game is still an absolute masterpiece in my opinion. So I guess we'll just begin this by talking about what this game is actually about, okay, I won't go into the full depth of the story, but I'll just give you a little bit of a brief, okay, so the game starts off, Joker's been captured by Batman, okay, you know, that's, that's how most Batman stories start, okay, Joker it is being a bad motherfucker, and Batman wants him in, in Arkham Asylum, as usual. So, however, the weird part about it is that, is that Joker kind of, like, lets Batman capture him a little too easily. At least that's what Batman says. So he knows there's something suspicious is going on. Basically, Joker wanted Batman to capture him and put him in Arkham Asylum because Joker wanted to take over Arkham Asylum, okay? And he's got it all set up and planned. So he manages to escape and he's basically running Arkham Asylum now. Now I'm panicking. Yeah. Don't panic. No, I am because, no, I need, not come I need me. it. I need it. So Batman's basically just got a stop the Joker doing Joker type things okay and on the way he's gonna meet all sorts of different villains and stuff uh, you'll, you'll meet like Bane you'll meet uh, Killer Croc Harley Quinn it's just a really great game with a great story and amazing characters and I think that's why I loved Batman after playing this was the characters you know they do such a good job with the characters that I just feel like I don't know they just 
I don't even know how to describe it, but they're just really well written. They, they just, the way they're voice acted as well. The Joker obviously being voiced by Mark Hamill, and he does such a good job with the Joker, okay? His voice, his laugh, everything about Mark Hamill in this game is perfect, okay? Kevin Conroy, rest in peace. He does an amazing job with Batman. I just genuinely, I can't imagine Batman's voice not being Kevin Conroy. That's how good a job he does. And all the other characters as well are really well voiced, okay? Harley Quinn's voice actress, I'm not sure, sure who it is, but maybe I'll just throw it up here. She does a phenomenal job, and all of the voices in this game are really good. And it just really brings these characters to life, you know? It really feels like you're playing like a comic book almost. Oh, let me go, you crazy bitch. Mm, Chappy used a bad word. Mama Spank. It should have been me. So yeah, boys and girls, I guess we'll just get into like the things that I really like about this game, aside from, I don't know, everything. I, this whole video is just going to be me gushing over how good this game is, but I think we got to talk about, like, we got to start with the gameplay of this game, okay? So the gameplay is pretty much broken up into, like, three different categories. So category one would be, like, the free flow combat, okay? So obviously you'll be doing a lot of fighting in this game, and that probably takes up, like, the core of this game, okay? The second category being, like, the stealth. So there's a lot of stealth sections in this game, and you've got to take out the, uh, the enemies quietly. You can go in there and just beat them up, but chance chances are you'll get absolutely murdered. And the third category being sort of like exploration, okay? Because this game really does invite you to like explore and, and try and find all the Riddler trophies and all the, and solve all the riddles, stuff like that. And I'll kick things off talking about the free flow combat, okay? Because I absolutely love the free flow combat in this game, okay? It's just so good. And I remember like when this game, or not when it came out, but as, as the Arkham game started to roll out, I remember a lot of people like criticizing the free flow combat, saying, oh, it's super easy and stuff like that. I remember seeing like memes where people would just like, hold a controller and just press square O and like beat the game doing that but like there's no fun in that you know and I get that the free flow combat is is fairly simple at this point you know you, you do you don't have to do a lot you know it's not devil may cry levels of combos but it's just super satisfying and I think a big reason why it is so satisfying is the sound design okay when you're like beating up these enemies you hear these amazing like sounds of crunching bones and just like real impact in your punches it just really makes you feel like you're, you're beating the shit out of something Somebody. It's round two. Sorry, man. Gotta run. I got places to go. Evil display. Damn. When you come up against like a ton of enemies, you're just completely surrounded and you're just absolutely wiping the floor with everybody. It is so fun and satisfying. I just love the free flow combat, even to this day. Obviously in Arkham Asylum, it's like the simplest version of the free flow combat. As the games roll out, they do get a little bit more, um, what's the word? They get a little bit more complex, you know, by Arkham Knight, there's a lot more mechanics and stuff, but it doesn't change the fact that it is still super satisfying, okay? And as for the stealth, also super satisfying as well. Like it's really fun to do the stealth stuff. It's definitely a more slower approach to the gameplay you, you'll be taking your time with this one you won't be like rushing in like you are with the with the fighting I can't tell you how amazing it feels to like put some explosive gel onto a wall get onto a gargoyle and then explode that wall onto somebody that is still one of the most satisfying things you can do in a video game I also always love like the inverted takedowns in this game you know like when you're on a gargoyle and then you drop down and, and then you pick them up by their neck and then drop them I don't know I just always love that see so, yeah, I absolutely love the stealth in this game and again it does get like slightly more complex complex in the later games they do add more mechanics and stuff and more gadgets that you can you can do the stealth with but it's still super fun and then the third thing being exploration okay and I think this game does exploration the best out of all of the Arkham games I suppose it's probably because there's this game is more like a of a sort of Metroidvania type game as opposed to like the other games which are all more open world but just trying to find all of the different Riddler trophies and and solving all the riddles I don't know it's just always really fun to me uh, they're, they're, they're simple they're not like super difficult riddles you, you'll usually find them pretty quickly but again super fun and if you ever want to like 100% complete this game that process is like in my opinion one of the most fun to do it in so yeah we've covered the gameplay lads what else is so good about this game okay I feel like this game really nails atmosphere above all else this game has just got such an amazing atmosphere okay the second you set foot in this world you feel like you're in a comic book you feel like you're in the Batman world and again a lot of that is to do with like the voice acting and stuff of the different characters but there's a lot of different things that go into the atmosphere of this 
this game again. One of those things, in my opinion, is just like the attention to detail with Batman himself. Now, a lot of you guys that have played this game will already be aware, but as you play through the game, like Batman's cape will get more and more torn up as, as the night goes on in the game. And it's such a small little detail, but I just feel like it adds so much to the atmosphere of the game. On top of the fact, like the music in this game, it's not like, I don't know, it's not like a um, Silent Hill 2 where it's an absolute masterpiece of music, but there's just like, I don't know, there's an eeriness to the music in this game. Like, it's just like an eerie ambience. Just listen to some of this and it'll blow that poppy trash music right out of your head. Wait, wait. Oh man, that's like the best part. And all the other attention to detail in the different environments, you know, through the asylum, there's loads of Easter eggs to other characters and other Batman villains and stuff. And I don't know, it just really makes you feel like you're in an asylum, you know? It feels like you're you're in the Batman Arkham Asylum. I mean, it's the game, but yeah, you get my point. The only other thing I wanted to talk about with this game in terms of things I love, because I mean, again, I could gush over this game for literally fucking hours, but I'm just going to mention Scarecrow, okay? Because the way they deal with Scarecrow in this game is absolute 10 out of 10, okay? He is, I mean, he, uh, like Joker, the highlight of this game in terms of villains, but Scarecrow is a close second. I can remember my very first playthrough with this game, okay, and it's, it's fairly late on in the game, but basically there's a moment where your TV, like, it, it feels like your TV is breaking, and for those who've played it, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Did anyone catch the game Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. But I was actually playing this game at my nan's house. I think it was like a bank holiday Monday or something. And my mum would just always drop me off at my nan's when there was a bank holiday Monday so she could go to work. I can remember the TV doing that like crackling thing. And I genuinely thought it was the TV because obviously I, I don't usually play on my nan's TV. I thought my nan had a dodgy TV for a minute. And then to find out that it was obviously part of the game, that blew my young mind, okay? I couldn't believe it. It was it was so like amazing. It was such a cool four full break. And I just really like the way they dealt with Scarecrow in this game, you know, he was he was genuinely quite creepy and unsettling at times. In the later Arkham games, like Arkham Knight, I feel like they didn't really do Scarecrow as well in that game. I feel like he was perfect in this one, though. See, so yeah, I suppose that's everything about this game that I, like, super duper love. Obviously, I just love the game in general, and again, I could talk about this game for hours and hours and hours. I'm not going to do that, though. You guys have got lives and shit. I can't talk about this game forever. However, I do want to mention about one criticism I have of this game, and I literally only have one small little gripe with this game, okay? And that is how they deal with Bane in this game. In my opinion, I feel like they did Bane super dirty. Basically, the way they deal with Bane in this game is he's been injected by that, like, Joker stuff. I don't know, like, the Joker Venom thing. Um, and it just turns him into this, like, roid rage monster rather than, like, him being, like, super intelligent. Yes. I've done steroids. And Bane has always been one of my favourite villains purely because he's like super intelligent as well as being like a freakish monster that could easily destroy Batman. And in this game they completely just evaporated all of the intelligent aspects of Bane and I get that he's been in injected by the Venom so I do get why that, that he's not like super intelligent but I just didn't like that they did that you know. I would have preferred Bane to be a proper villain you know in this game rather than him just being a really bad boss battle that was, it was just more silly. Other than that boys and girls I don't really have any like hardcore criticisms of this game, okay? If we were gonna nitpick, maybe, like, the final boss with Joker is not the best, okay? And again, that does lead into the silliness side of things a little bit, but it doesn't bother me that much. This game, in my opinion, is just such a masterpiece, okay? If you somehow have not played it, you absolutely have to. It is an absolute 10 out of 10, and I know there's a lot of superhero games that are coming out these days. You know, we've just had Spider-Man 2 coming out. We've got Wolverine around the corner. Well, it's, it's probably a little bit further around the corner. It's probably a couple years away, but I feel like this game really did lay the road for our, like, resurgence in, in superhero video games, you know, because without this game, I don't feel like we get these really good superhero games, you know, before superhero games were super inconsistent. We obviously had like the Wolverine Origins game, which is surprisingly good. The Punisher on PS2 was good. They, there were a few like pretty good ones, but there were also a lot of shit ones. So not only do I want to thank this game for my amazing love for Batman, but I also want to thank it for the like recent really good like superhero games we've been getting. Because again, without this game, we don't have these games, I don't think. But anyway, boys and girls, let me know in the comments, okay, whether or not you've played Arkham Asylum. Do you love it? Is it one of your favorite games of all time? Let me know in the comments. Other than that, boys and girls, subscribe here if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Peace.